Episode 68, How and When to Prepare for a Crisis. Welcome to the PR Playbook Podcast, the only podcast giving you actionable skills and advice you need to execute a strategic PR program. Warning, what you hear next may lead to brand awareness and increased sales and customer exposure. Now here's your host, Rinjini Joshua. Hello and welcome to episode 68. I know it's been a minute. I'm sorry for the delay. I love a good crisis because in a crisis, it gives you a bird's eye view of what is possible that could happen that's bad. And more so than that, I love crisis management and being able to predict what's going to go wrong before it actually happens. And we've done a few crisis management plans at the Silver Telegram, and it really helps the business protect itself, frame a crisis, know the steps that you're going to take when something goes wrong, and kind of know how you're going to handle it from a messaging standpoint so that you can be well positioned in the media of of what you want people to think of you. Now, obviously, crisis management in technology or startup or lifestyle world is a lot different than crisis management in publicity in the entertainment world. So I'm glad I don't have to deal with that. But I do love being ready, prepared for the worst. And today I wanted to cover some basics of crisis management so that you can start thinking about worst case scenarios to protect yourself and your thriving, successful business. Now there's 10 key elements to a crisis management plan. And so we're going to go through those 10 key elements and hopefully you can, you know, as you're listening, maybe think about what you would do in this each, each step. So the first thing is risk analysis. The first thing you want to do is figure out what are the risks that could happen to your company? Is it a trademark issue? Is it a customer service issue? Is it, um, you know, if you, if you have a warehouse, could there be a fire? Is it an employee issue? So lay out, uh, I usually like to start small, lay out five crises. Um, maybe that's, maybe that's not small, but five crises that are the most worrisome for you at night. Um, things that you worry about happening to your company. Number two, activation protocol. So now, as soon as something happens, your warehouse is on fire, what do you do? What is the next step? Activation protocol is how do you start your crisis management when a crisis occurs? So that's the next step of thinking, okay, what's the first process? Three, chain of command. I love this exercise of building out the chain of command because It's a great way to kind of identify who's who in your organization and who's going to be responsible for what. So the chain of command is who's going to be responsible for sending out emails, who's going to be responsible for calling the police, who's going to be responsible for um, blocking off the area. So these are the things that you need to identify. Number four, command center plan. So this is a plan of how you're going to actually manage the physical location the person who's going to, you know, block off the area, what are they going to do? The person who's going to call 911, what are they going to do? Who's going to file reports, things like that. So you really need to have the chain of command and the command center plan, which is like right next to each other. The fifth thing, response action. And what are the response actions that you want each of these people to take? What are they responsible for in the case of emergency? Number six, Internal communications. How are you going to communicate with your employees, your internal team, your investors, your stakeholders? How are you going to tell them what happened? Are you going to tell them what happened? When are you going to tell them what happened? And what information are you going to divulge? Um, Usually this falls on the chain of command of like the communications manager. So it's a specific person who's going to be creating these internal communications for your internal employees. Number seven, External communications. How are you going to communicate with this with the public? What is the backlash? Is someone going to cover it? Are you going to respond? Um, these are the things that you kind of have to identify. If a media writes a story, how are you going to respond? Or is your external plan, I'm going to reach out to the media before they write a story, or I'm going to give them the sources they need. 
How transparent are you going to be with the media? And of course, uh, there's going to be a different plan for each one. Some may not require an external plan. So you just have to kind of factor that in depending on the risks that you have outlined. Eight, what are the resources? What are the resources that everybody needs? A call sheet, an employee list, a chain of command list, and then maybe a process list, um, a report that you might want to create so that people can fill out the report. What are the different materials that you're going to need to resolve the issue and make sure that it's recorded and that you know what you're going to do next and you're going to be organized about it. Number nine, training. So once you've got all of these first eight steps, you need to train the people who are involved, train anybody else who may be ancillary to this event as well. So um, training is really important because let's say you have a crisis and the person, the communications manager doesn't even know that they're supposed to do certain things. You know, it's not going to get done properly. So make sure you're communicating your plan with all the key constituents. It's also great to have the plan somewhere in a public drive, like on Google Drive or in Dropbox, not public, but internal drive so that everybody internal uh, to your organization can access it and understand what the plan is if something goes down. 10, review your plan. Okay, this is where people make a plan, they edit it, they finalize it, they spend all this time and money to like really get it nice and right. And they don't review it. You cannot have a plan that's five years old. It's probably not relevant. My recommendation is to review your plan every six months and make sure that the people who are a part of that plan are still there. I think that's the biggest thing in the gap that we see when we look at crisis communications plans. Half of the people don't even work there anymore. So make sure that you review your plan every six months. And and when you review your plan, you're also reviewing the risks. Maybe you are factoring anything that happened in the last six months or the last year and updating your activation protocol and chain of command and all your different plans and your communications in result of something that actually happened or something that you saw happen somewhere else. So updating this plan on a regular basis is a good idea. So I'm gonna go through the quick 10 elements Number one, first assess your risk. Number two, what's the activation protocol? Number three, who's in your chain of command? Number four, what is the command center plan? Number five, what are the response action plans? Six, how are you going to do internal communications? Seven, what are your external communications? Eight, a list of resources to support your crisis management plan. Nine, train up your employees and your team. And 10, review the plan every six months. I hope this was helpful. And I hope that you are well prepared so that in a crisis, you don't panic. So good luck and stay stress-free.